I know it's not officially fall yet, but we've had like three chilly sweater weather type of days here. So to me, it's fall and my basic white girl is ready to come out and play. Hey guys, Tina here. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm bringing you my part two, I guess, of my empties. This is pretty much all the empties that I used up over the summer. My last one was more skincare and body care and stuff like that. I do have a couple of those items in this video simply because I had a couple items more than a couple uh, items that were just about done. So this will be mostly makeup with a few skincare items kind of thrown in. If you're new to empties, I say this in every empties video, I feel it's the best way to get a review on a product because you've either tried it out and you know exactly how you feel or you tossed it because it was crap. If you like empties videos and you'd like to see what I went through, keep watching. I feel like first we should start with the skincare stuff because uh, there's not as much in this section. So I've got some wipes here. I'm just gonna set this container down. I've got the Skin Iceland uh, Glacial Cleansing Cloths. Skin Iceland is one of my favorite skincare brands. These are some of my favorite face wash wipes, I guess, kind of thing, but they are very pricey considering you can get some at the drugstore for like six bucks. Um, but they smell good, they leave your face feeling nice and clean, they take off makeup, very nice. And then I've also got a Neutrogena All-in-One Makeup Removing Cleansing Cloth uh, thing. This is one of my go-tos. I go through a ton of those. Then I've also got the Skin Iceland uh, Glacial Cleansing Cloths for Eyes. These I did like, but I like them more for all over my face. I found that the facial ones were more soft, they were less rough, whereas these I felt were a little like scratchy on my eyes. So I did use these for my face and these for my eyes as well as all, all over my face. And once again, favorite skincare brand. I used up a L'Oreal Micellar Water. This is the normal to oily skin with the blue cap. Honestly, I wasn't overly impressed with it. I felt it left a weird residue on my skin. It wasn't necessarily an oily res residue or anything because um, it says oil free on it, no rinse, stuff like that. But I feel like when it comes to micellar waters, I like the Garnier one better and I'm trying out the new oil control one with the green cap by Garnier and so far that's, so, that, that's okay so far. Uh, this one just wasn't overly impressive. It didn't take off a ton of my makeup. I mean, it's just not one I would buy again. Facial moisturizers. This first one is the Symphony Beauty Snow Cream Moisturizer and this had such an interesting texture. It was like, um, like a gel cream. It was so weird and I found that it would pill a little bit on my skin. It did a good job of moisturizing. I used it as a daytime moisturizer, but I just, um, yeah, I don't know. It was weird. It was different. It was nice to try. I've got this super tiny little uh, Glam Glow Volcasmic Matte Glow Moisturizer. Um, I don't buy Glam Glow. I'll get samples when I can, but I don't typically buy Glam Glow because it's so pricey, but I actually might purchase this. This was really nice. It smells so good. It smells like an orange creamsicle. Um, and I've tried a couple other like oil-free mattifying uh, lotions and they usually have a really heavy menth scent like menthol, mentholatum, stuff like that. This one was just very nice. It did do the job. It didn't like dry my skin out or anything. It felt nice and matte and ready for makeup and stuff. And I enjoyed this one. A couple other moisturizers here. I've got the, and I'm saying this wrong. I know I'm saying this wrong because I saw it on someone else's video and I was like, oh my god, I've been saying it wrong this whole time. This is the Ol, Oli, Olay, Heinrichsen. Anyways, this is the Balance Counterbalance Oil Control Hydrator. And I really did like this stuff. It didn't have a heavy, um, like, mentholated scent like some of the other ones that I've used in the past. It had, like, a nice mint scent, which was nice. And it felt really nice on the skin. It felt like it was moisturizing my skin, but it also felt very matte, which was weird for me because usually when I use oil control type moisturizers, they feel very, very matte and very tacky. This one didn't. It left my skin feeling very nice. So I did enjoy that. 
And then this is the Embryolisse Lat Creme Concentrate. I don't speak baguette, so I don't know. Um, this is supposed to be something you can use as a moisturizer, as a makeup remover, as a primer. I tried it as a makeup remover. Not good. <clears throat> Not good at all. Um, as a moisturizer, it was okay. As a primer, don't know. Didn't try it because it was small. But um, I don't know if I would purchase this again quite frankly, because I have other moisturizers that I like. But, uh, yeah. It was nice, I guess. This is the Formula 1006. I don't even know how to say this brand. Pores Be Pure Skin Clarifying Blend Mask with Strawberry and Yarrow. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I don't know if it was clearing up my skin. I mean, I didn't notice a huge difference. And towards the end of the bottle, it started to burn my skin. And I don't believe it was expired. So honestly, I don't know if I would repurchase this. It does smell nice. It does feel nice for the most part. But I just, I don't know. I didn't notice a huge difference in my skin. And I have other face masks. This is the Burt's Bees Cleansing Oil with Coconut and Argan. This is for a normal to dry skin. I had this sent to me by Ipsy in one of my bags. So I figured I'd try it out. A decent job of removing makeup. I would put a little bit in my hand, rub it together, kind of like the uh, like cleansing balms and stuff, and apply it to my face and stuff. It did burn around my eyes. Uh, I would not recommend that. And I'm honestly not a huge fan of the scent of Argan. So that was a little <laughs> troublesome. Um, but honestly, it did the job. If I get it sent to me again, I would probably use it, but I don't know if I would buy it because I don't have dry skin typically, and I don't want to cause any skin problems. This is the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Fresh Cut Split End Mender, and my hairstylist can vouch for this because there's been a couple times where I can't get into her for months. Uh, like right now, my roots are pretty bad, and I will apply this to my ends until I can get in for another cut, and she comments, you know you do, on how nice my hair feels or looks or something like that, even though it's been months before I even had a trim. I fully attribute it to this. This mostly as like a treatment, let's say I go more than a few months with out a cut. I will use this just as a treatment in my hair and I really do enjoy this. I'll probably be buying this again. Okay, little foil packets and then we are on into makeup, I believe. So I've got the, once again, gonna butcher it, Ol, Olay, Oli, I don't know, the Heinrichs and the Sheer Transformation uh, Cream, which is my favorite Truth Serum Collagen Booster, favorite and invigorating night treatment, little foil packets, favorite. Love the skincare brand, love the three step system here it's like honestly I already have some more in my uh, in my bathroom right now uh, the sheer transformation moisturizer is my favorite the true serum booster you use in the morning and then the invigorating night treatment you use at night I absolutely love the way my skin looks when I use all of these items so I got some sample packs and I used them up this is the Clarins super restorative day cream for all skin types um, honestly I like most of the stuff I've been trying from Clarins uh, this was just like a little two-day sample I did like how it made my skin feel but I can't really give a good idea as to what it did to my skin because like I said it was only a two-day sample. Typically, I don't like to give reviews on skincare products unless it's been a few weeks. So, it was okay. All right, now it's time for makeup. So, I've got some foundation samples here. Um, one is the Becca Matte Foundation in Shell. And this was really matte. Like, that, I could feel almost instantly that it was mattifying my skin to the point where my cheeks because I'm not oily everywhere I'm oily through here I've been on my chin and my nose constantly breaks apart foundation but my cheeks actually felt tight and a little uncomfortable so if you are super oily I would highly recommend this foundation I wear the shade shell which is like a fair with neutral to yellow undertones and I really did enjoy this. I think this would be really great as a summer foundation, especially when I get a bit more oily. And then this is the Makeup Forever HD foundation in Y215. I did try this foundation out and then I had a little bit left to use. Not overly impressed. It broke apart on my face. It broke apart on my skin. It didn't last very long. I just, I can't get into it. I can't get behind it. Setting sprays. I've got the Urban Decay D-Slick Makeup Control Setting Spray. This is the oil control one. I like to use this one in the summer. Um, Urban Decay is my favorite setting spray brand so far. 
and I highly recommend it. And then this one is the Physician's Formula Insta Ready Setting Spray. Honestly, as far as drugstore goes, uh, this is probably one of the best that I've tried compared to the L'Oreal one is really good too. Um, those are really like at the top of my drugstore setting spray list. But uh, yeah, I'd probably buy it again if I was unable to get my Urban Decay, but I have like 2,500 backups in my collection. So, okay, so I've got like 500 mascaras because I do layer mascara and that's why I go through them so quickly. I've got a Buxom mascara. It's okay. I like it for layering because the brush has rubberized tips and it's kind of shaped like the Too Faced Better Than Sex. Um, I have a couple other in my collection. It's all right. This is the Bare Minerals Lash Domination Trial Size. I do have a full size in my collection. A friend of mine recommended this to me and I really do like it. Um, it's good as a second layer mascara to help build the volume and the uh, intensity of your lashes. So I like that one. Benefit Roller Lash, favorite mascara, one of them anyways. Um, I love this one. It's, it's great, honestly, it is. Too Faced Better Than Sex, again, one of my favorite mascaras, love these, although I do find that the little tiny ones like this work better than the full size, I don't know what it is about it, but I already have more in my collection. Tardist, one of my favorite mascaras, I have a full size in my collection, ready to be opened up. Makeup Forever Smoky Extravagant, this one had, I, I think, yeah, a very interesting brush. It kind of looks like a little Christmas tree, and I did like this one for layering, although I find the fat end of the brush was a little difficult to maneuver. I did like it. And then this is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume. My husband picked this up for the Husband Buys My Makeup uh, video, which if you haven't seen, I will link it for you to watch. I'm not a fan of this mascara. It doesn't do a lot for me. It doesn't give me volume. It doesn't hold a curl. It just, it's not my favorite. I prefer the Clump Crusher, which is the one in the green tube, so. I've got another foundation sample. This is the Becca, I think this is the ultimate coverage one in Shell. I did a video review on that, so I will link that uh, in the cards above, description box below kind of thing. I really did like this one. I ended up buying the full size of it because I love the coverage on it and I love the staying power. It was really great, so. Some brow products. I have the Maybelline Brow Drama Pro Palette in the shade Blonde. I used up all the powder and I felt it was time to get another one. This is one of my favorite brow kits. I will be purchasing this again and I think it's very easy, especially for someone who's just starting to get into brows. You take the little tools in there, put some wax on, add the powder, and then highlight a little bit underneath with the powder in there. Really good set. This is the Maybelline Brow Precise Micro Crayon and I have to say, I did like this, but it was like, honestly, I used it up in like two days because it kept breaking. No matter what kind of pressure I put on my brows, it literally broke every time I used it. So I don't know if I would waste my money on this. I would go for a thicker pencil and simply because I have very sparse brows, usually a thicker pencil is easier for me to work with because it fills in more space more quickly. But two concealers. I finally finished up the YSL Touche Clot in the shade 2. This is the Radiant Touch Concealer. I don't think I would purchase this again just because these kind of concealers don't do a lot for me. Um, I've tried the Maybelline Dream Lumi or whatever as well. This... <laughs> It took me forever to go through this. I think I bought this last year, honestly, because I just didn't enjoy how it looked on my skin, but honestly, it was pretty much the same as the Maybelline Dream Lumi. I didn't notice a huge difference between the two, and I didn't like either one of them. I've got this tiny size of the NARS Radiant Creamy in the shade Vanilla, and it was a concealer. I don't get why everyone's so hyped up about it. I, I don't know. Like, honestly... I can see why some people say it's comparable to the Maybelline Fit Me because they do have the same kind of formula and the same kind of coverage and stuff like that. I don't know if I would pay that much for this concealer again, especially when there's so many good ones at the drugstore, but it was nice to try it. This is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation and it looks really rough because uh, it is in really rough shape. Uh, I wear the shade 1, which is fair with neutral to yellow undertones, and this has to be one of my favorite high-end foundations. I will be repurchasing as soon as I go through some other ones in my collection. Um, it's 
it's very nice. Like it gives a, I'd say a medium type of uh, coverage. It has a very nice finish. It stays most of the day. Um, you can build it up and it feels very lightweight on the skin and it doesn't look overly cakey. Um, this is one of my first ever high-end foundations and I love it. This is the Estee Edit Pore Vanishing Stick and I used up as much as I could before I just had to get it out of my collection. I bought this to compare to like the Benefit um, Professional kind of thing. It's alright. It's okay. I do believe this line has been discontinued so I'm not going to recommend whether or not you should purchase it because I don't think you can anymore. I've got two eyeliners, which is absolutely amazing because I don't think I ever go through an eyeliner. I've got the ColourPop, uh, this is like their stick liner in the shade Swerve. Black. It's not the blackest liner ever, but I did like it for um, layering with uh, liquid liner, setting down a nice line, and uh, it was okay. I mean, I did used to love it, but now that I have other liners in my collection that I know are excellent, like the Rimmel Scandalized ones, Oh my freaking god, those are amazing. Um, I don't know if I would repurchase this, but I still love ColourPop. I've got the Essence Super Fine Eyeliner Pen in Waterproof. This one I actually trimmed the tip off just a tiny... Oh, let's... What am I doing? There we go. This one I trimmed the tip off just a tiny bit because it's freaking huge. And I tried to use this over and over again, and I found that it would skip on my lash line and I found that sometimes I wouldn't get um, like 100% pigmentation even with storing them upside down. If you have eyeliner pens like this, store them uh, upside down. I have a little candle jar on my desk. Store them upside down like this that the, uh, the ink or the makeup or whatever stays in the tip. It's easier to use and I tried to use it today and I ended up just saying fuck it. I don't want to deal with this anymore because I can't do a wing with it because it's too long and I just don't get right pigmentation with it. Oh my god we're almost done. Okay so uh, it makes me very sad to say that I'm getting rid of my Tarte blush in the shade exposed. I tried so hard to use this up. This is one of the most beautiful natural blushes for fair skin that I have ever used. I love it. I love their formula and stuff, but unfortunately this one has gone bad. You can uh, see there's some color changing going on. I did try to scrape off a layer and stuff, but I just, I don't feel safe putting this on my skin anymore. I would probably repurchase this. Um, but I don't go through blush that much, so we shall see. Oh my god, I finally used up a ColourPop eyeshadow. Whew, this took me forever. Uh, this is the Super Shock shadow in the shade Hanky Panky, and not only did I use it up, I fucking destroyed it, but uh, this, honestly, this is like one of the first ColourPop shadows I ever, ever bought, like last year, and it took me forever to go through it. Not because they take forever to go through, but because I have so many other eyeshadows in my collection. So I ended up using this as a crease color, as a brow color, as stuff, everything I could to possibly get through it. And I did it, and yay, I'm so proud of myself. Love ColourPop eyeshadows, I have more in my collection, and I will probably repurchase this one. This product isn't going in the garbage. I'm going to actually pass it on to my mom and see if she wants to use it. This is the Revlon Mega Multiplier Mascara in, um, I believe it's brown black. Black and brown. Sorry. Um, this was sent to me by Influencer Free for review purposes, and I have to tell you, I'm not overly impressed by it. I honestly haven't been overly impressed by too many uh, Revlon mascaras. It did not mega multiply my lashes. It gives length for sure, but no volume, it doesn't hold a curl, it just, it wasn't a good formula for me, especially because it's not black and I use black mascara, but I think my mom might enjoy it because she doesn't wear a ton of makeup, so I'm going to see if she wants it. And then I also used up the Maybelline Dream Cushion uh, Foundation. My re initial review of this wasn't the greatest. I wasn't a huge fan, but I ended up really loving this one. I honestly can't get anywhere out of this cushion. I've consistently like pulled it out and flipped it and flipped it and stuff like that. And finally it got to the point where I just took the freaking cushion out of here and slapped it on my face because I was trying to use up as much as I could. I liked it. Honestly, I will probably repurchase this. I did really like this foundation. Um, you don't get as much as you normally do. You get about half the amount 
that you normally do for a foundation, but I really like the finish that it gave and it was very lightweight for summer, so it was nice. All right, guys, that is everything I went through through most of the summer and a little bit here into the fall. If you like this video and you think I did a good job, leave me a thumbs up down below and let me know. If you'd like to watch any of my other empties videos, I will link the playlist for you down below. Also, any foundation reviews or anything like that, I will link for you guys to watch if you'd like to. If you've tried any of these products, I'd love to know your opinions in the comment section down below. And hopefully you'll hit that subscribe button so I can see you next time. Bye, guys.